Hey, y'all need a break. Listen to these stories from our slash ask reddit. What dark secret are you hiding from everyone? My stepdad tried to kill me when I was little. Trigger warning for domestic violence and language. My stepdad was a great AA hole. He was in my life from the beginning, after my bio dad up and left, till I was about 13 to 14. He was an abusive, alcoholic, jobless D wad who constantly physically and verbally abused both my mom and I. On multiple occasions either my mom or I called the cops and watched them drag the sorry sack of crap out the house and throw him in jail for a couple of days. They were, sadly, the happiest days of my childhood. When I was little I can remember countless times where I had gotten into physical fights with the man, resulting in black eyes, cuts, bruises, the works. I won't go into detail any further, since it's kinda hard to talk about, but I will say this. I never told anyone about this, this is the first time I've gotten it down in writing or out in the open at all. When I was little, 5 to 6 years old I'd say, I lived with my mom and stepdad in my stepdad's parents' attic. My mom frequently went out during the day for work, and didn't come home till late evening or night. Well, one day, after my parents had a pretty hostile argument, my mom left for work and my dad was pretty pent up. This is what I remember, and continue to remember almost every day since the event. My dad took one of those large, heavy-duty trash bags out of his parents' kitchen, dragged me into the living room of the attic, stuffed me in the bag, and tied it after letting out some air. I remember being terrified, too scared to act out of fear of getting hit or yelled at. I waited till I heard him close the attic door, then proceeded to use my fingers to claw a hole through the trash bag. I remember it taking a while, since I wasn't that strong at the time due to malnourishment and well, my age, but I eventually made it out and laid on the floor just waiting for my mom to get home. I don't know if she knows what happened, if she just thought I was playing with a trash bag or what, but that's what I remember and I've been carrying it for years. Thankfully she eventually left that dirt bag and I can now happily say I have an amazing father who I love very much, so this story does have a happy ending. Thanks for reading my little vent. I'm kinda terrified to post this but I know getting it out finally will do me some good. When I was a teenager, I worked at a novelty tourist shop near me. Being the idiot that I was, I stole a wad of cash from the store. It was $100 in ones. I told nobody, but they knew it was missing. Right about the same time, a co-worker who was always trying to get me fired was telling someone she got about $100 in tips from her other job. They ended up firing her because they didn't trust that it wasn't her. When I was young, probably around age 9 or 10, I was walking home with my dog from a house around the block when he cut the corner and walked diagonally through the yard of this super mean old lady who lives at the end of your street. She was in her yard at the time tending to these really fancy looking rose bushes she had growing in beds along the border with her neighbor. My dog was a very friendly golden retriever who didn't even really come near her and certainly didn't do anything threatening, but she sprayed the F out of him with some kind of insecticide or other chemical she was using on her roses. I ran back home with the dog and hosed him off. He coughed a bunch, but seemed otherwise fine. I didn't tell my parents because somehow I thought I was going to get into trouble for letting the dog walk in her yard. I'm glad I didn't tell them though, because I decided that night to sneak downstairs, out the half bath window, and down the street to her yard where I cut down every goddamn rose bush I could get my hands on. When I was younger I lived with my grandmother. Not long after I turned 18 her health started to decline, that sort of decline that you know means she won't be around for much longer. Over the months I did my best to take care of her. Getting her to the hospital when she needed, and other things. We had someone coming every day to help her with things I couldn't. Well what my family doesn't know is that the night she passed, I was in the living room watching TV. My dog was in bed with my grandma, and I started to hear him whimper, and bark. I knew what was happening, I knew that if I acted I could potentially save her. I didn't want to watch her suffer anymore though, to watch her live with so much pain, and unable to do anything for herself anymore. So I made the choice to let her pass before making any calls. She lived 92 years, and the only regret I have is that she passed a month after I would have graduated if I hadn't been kicked out of school. She had been in good enough health at the time to go to my graduation. I still kick myself for how stupid I was back then. Edit, I didn't expect this much support. Thanks. I'm not too torn up about letting her pass, I knew it was for the best. She was such a great person, she didn't deserve to live in such a poor manner any longer than she already had. I don't regret what I did, I regret what I had done that got me kicked out of school, that I didn't try and make it to graduation for her. I think I've lived my life so far in a way that she'd be proud of. Not graduating before she passed is the only regret I really have in this life so far, and I'm 35 now. So I think I'm doing pretty good. When I was 16, 
I conspired with a heroin addict I met online to help me off myself with heroin and dump my body in a dumpster in exchange for my valuables. I lived in a small town and he was in a bigger city where my school had an upcoming trip. We planned for me to slip away during the trip and meet up with him to do the deed. He chickened out last minute and ghosted me. My wife, her mom and I bought a house about two years ago, just from talking to the neighbors I've gathered that the family who lived here before had a daughter that was mixed up with the wrong people, we had some random person knock on our door at night saying he needed gas, we are down a long driveway, no way you'd randomly walk up to our house to ask for help, I think he was looking for the people who used to live here, and then another time, Sunday morning making pancakes for the family. I get a knock on the door and it's four sheriff's officers saying they received a 911 call that hung up and it was from the house. We don't have a landline and I assured them my wife and two-year-old did not make any call. They mentioned a name of the previous occupants and I let them know we moved in earlier this year and they seemed okay with that and left. Anyways I was doing some yard work and struck up conversation with the neighbor. He saw the police cars and asked what was up. I told him the situation and he just goes, oh yeah, that family was messed up. The cops were probably being cautious considering the shooting. What shooting I ask, he kinda looks at me with a sad worried face, the shooting in your house. Wait what, I say truly baffled, he then proceeds to tell me that about two years before, the father in the house confronted his daughter and boyfriend he didn't like, and shot and killed the boyfriend in the house. Our state doesn't have a disclosure law so we never knew, I was blown away, all the strange happenings kinda made sense now, he said the friends of the victim had kinda terrorized them for a while because the police were taking so long to press charges, slash tires, midnight fireworks, odd crap that the neighbors hated. I was shocked but just said, that's crazy, but hey, do me a favor and never tell my wife or mother-in-law about that, they are a little spooked by things like that. So the TRDL is that we live in a murder house and I'm the only one of my family that knows. In middle school, I made a smoking pipe out of copper pipe just for fun. I know you should not smoke out of copper as the fumes are potentially toxic. My stepdad took it from me and started using it. He smoked with it for years. I hated him for physically abusing me so I never said anything. It's now 30 years later and he was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and likely only has a few years to live. I hope he rots in hell. I don't know if it had any effect, but I like to think the copper pipe played a role in his sickness as karma for being an a-hole. I've been accessory to both my parents' infidelity. At age 5 my mother cheated on my dad while he was deployed, and my brother told me what was happening and that I shouldn't tell anyone. My father slept with his secretary two years later, for a few years, and would even bring me on dates with her telling my mother we were going to the movies. He took me to her house and had a roommate watch me while they went out or just hung out in her room. They're still married I don't know if either know the other did the thing, or if they still are doing the thing. Edit, to everyone saying maybe they're in an open or poly relationship, sure maybe they are, but I doubt it considering their views on most everything. Also, if they were in one, then they should have explained it to us instead of sneaking around and telling us not to tell the other parent, and maybe don't bring your kid on your house dates. So yeah maybe they were, but if they were, then in my opinion, their behavior goes from crappy for involving their kids in their infidelity, to crappy that they involve their kids in a lifestyle without explaining it to them and making their kids think that they were cheating on each other. My uncle owned an old Camaro that collected dust in his garage. When I was around 10, my family and I were in town visiting and I wrote the F word in the dust on the hood of the car. I used my thumb so that the letters were fatter than my normal index finger. A few hours later my aunt slash uncle asked us who did it and I proved it wasn't me by showing how the person who did it had bigger fingers than me. Taking that crap to my grave. Edit. This blew up. I'm 33 now and the entire family definitely knows it was me. It's an inside joke now where someone tries to get me to admit to it and I never will. One of my closest co-workers, who is an integral part to our very large corporation, killed a man in his late teens and threw the body in a lake. He only got off on a technicality. I work remotely so I don't build a lot of personal relationships with people I work with regularly. I googled his full name. It freaked me out at first. But I've kinda gotten over it. I wonder if anyone else knows. It happened over 40 years ago. He will retire soon and then I might ask another co-worker about it. I just don't want to stir the pot. I'm living with my mom right now because she's got cancer, but to be honest, I can't wait to see her go. It sounds horrible but I'd rather see her go than see her suffer even more. It's not like I would get anything out of her will, it's more like it sucks because she's always in pain and seeing her like that brings me pain. Edit, thank you everyone for your responses, I felt so alone on this for a long time. She's still fighting a long battle but it's just getting worse every day. I appreciate the help that everyone has offered. It really helps a lot. Thank you.
When I was around nine years old, I used my mom's credit card to sign up my crappy alcoholic stepfather for an adult website in hopes of starting a fight and her leaving him. For your information, she did leave after another year or so. Current stepdad is a real keeper. Edited to correct a spelling mistake. Everyone in my family is nagging me with the fact that I don't want to date girls anymore, and think that I'm strange or gay. But I lost my girlfriend which I assume I could have a good life with her. She committed suicide and I never talk about that with them. I know I can speak with some members of my family but my parents are different. Edit, thank you so much guys for your kindness, but I don't want to discuss that at the moment with someone. It will bring back some memories that will make me more depressed than before. I found my adoption papers a few years ago when I was looking for a copy of my birth certificate. I know my birth mom I just never had a relationship with her. My maternal grandmother took me in in 2002, I never knew she adopted me I just knew that one day I ended up living with her after telling her one day I don't want to go back home lol. I also found the letter that my mom wrote as to why she was giving me up. That one really hurt. Edit, didn't expect this many upvotes honestly lol, thank you everyone for your kind words. My grandma is really the sweetest person ever I'm forever grateful for her, but I just wanted to say now that I'm older, I understand why my mom did what she did and believe it or not, we actually have a cordial relationship now lol. Edit 2, this brought back some unsettling feelings I thought I was over lol, but I want to thank you guys for your own stories and kind words. They made me realize that I'm not the only one who had a rough life growing up, and I shouldn't let that stop me from healing and being the best that I can be. This has been one of the worst years of my life, I've been taking loss after loss and I honestly felt like unaliving myself. I kept coming back to read the comments and I see how strong everyone is and didn't let what they went through stop them from doing better. So I just wanted to say that I've made an appointment to start therapy again and I'm going to be completely honest about how I truly feel and open up more. Thank you so much Reddit. Also I haven't been the best granddaughter lately so I'm spending more quality time with my grandma and helping her out with whatever she needs. Not a huge secret in comparison to some of these answers, but I feel the guilt of it often. After my fiancé passed, I napped all the time for over a year. My aunt was calling me one day and I just denied her call, went back to napping. It was my aunt calling because my grandma, who was very sick with cancer, wanted to say happy birthday a day before my birthday. Grandma died the next day. I should have picked up the damn phone. In high school, I was a super good kid. Straight A student who loved homework, keeping out of trouble, and who was quiet as hell during class. So anyway, there was this guy who was also in AP classes with me but he was super loud and obnoxious, but would pull stunts in such a way that he would have some margin of plausible deniability. Though we never spoke, I'm not sure he even knew I existed, he rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe it was from the one cold day when this other girl in our class had her nipples poking through her shirt because she forgot a sweater, and he kept saying to her, damn it's cold huh? Maybe it was from when he would pretend to be friends with kid who was definitely spectrum and desperate to be friends with him to do the bully's homework for him and then bully him the next day. I don't know. So at random, sometimes once a week or a month or once every couple of months, I would whistle. It's this high-pitched whistle that sounds like a tea kettle that I can do while barely moving my mouth. Back then, no one knew I could do it except for my family. The super obnoxious kid always got in trouble. I was never once suspected. My wife and I aren't officially married. No one knows. We had a ceremony and everything, reception. The whole nine yards. We just never did the official paperwork. We realized that since she's going back to school, it benefits her financially to go through financial aid as single rather than married. When she finishes up, we're going to head over to town hall and finish the last step. When I was around five or six, my mom and dad were fighting just about every day. Well, I was napping on the couch when my mom came in very upset and she shook me awake. She asked me if I saw the girl my dad brought home. I've always felt terrible for this because I hadn't seen anyone but my dad that whole day, I'm pretty sure he was just playing video games like usual, but for some reason in my sleepy kid brain I answered yes. I said she was with him in their room. I'm honestly not sure why I lied like that, but they got a divorce shortly after and I always felt like it was my fault. Until I recently found out my little sister is actually my half-sister but that's a whole other story. Edit, for clarification, my dad had been cheating with my mom's sister and my mom was cheating with one of their friends to get back at him. She thought he was cheating with a different girl but found out later it was my aunt. Honestly their relationship was on its way out. I don't feel bad about it now since a few years ago we found out my little sister is my half-sister from the affair my mom had. It's not my secret, but my mom's. And I'm not hiding it from everyone, just the person who it potentially matters to the most. When my mom was in high school in the 60s, she had a long-term serious boyfriend named Jimmy. 
They were each other's first, they were together for years, and were planning on getting married. He went away to college, my mom stayed behind, but they were still together. You know what happened next? He cheated and got the new girl pregnant. He comes home to break the news to my mom. Abortion was not legal at the time. He basically says that he wants to be with my mom, but he has no choice but to marry this other girl. My mom was devastated. Here's the secret, my mom was also pregnant by him, but hadn't told him yet. She decided she wasn't ever going to tell him. Jimmy went on to marry the other girl and never knew my mom was also pregnant. She told me that she later threw herself down a flight of stairs to cause a miscarriage. My mom actually reconnected with Jimmy during the early days of Facebook. She didn't have an account, but asked me to look for him using mine. He was still married to the same person. My mom was married to my dad. They wrote to each other for a while, using my account. Uck. Signed their messages saying I love you. My mom passed away a number of years ago. I think about this knowledge I have that Jimmy doesn't. This major life event thing that he doesn't even know happened. That could have changed the trajectory of many lives. I'm certainly not going to tell him. It's not my secret to tell. Edit, there seems to be a part of the story that I didn't make clear enough. My mom had a miscarriage and never had that baby. It was an intentional miscarriage by throwing herself down the stairs. Jimmy is not my father. Most people in my family think that my mother recently died suddenly from complications due to cancer, but she really died from the toxic effects of oxycodone, morphine, fentanyl, and methamphetamine. Seems as though she just had herself a secret death party. I had an IBS attack once and had to violently crap in a church grounds behind someone's car. Used underwear to wipe too and left that there. Not proud. Thanks for watching. Do you also have secrets that you're keeping? Share them in the comments below for others to appreciate. And then like and subscribe to enjoy more Reddit stories.